So the following will be just a brief tutorial about uh, rectal cancer, and we're specifically going to cover the role of MRI uh, in imaging rectal cancer. And so the real role for MRI is for local staging. So prior to receiving any sort of therapy, uh, MRI is very good at uh, looking at the tumor, deciding uh, how infiltrative it is, how many local nodes there are, and that really can determine uh, the sort of treatment that can be given. MRI can also be used uh, to reassess the tumors after uh, appropriate therapy uh, before they go ahead and resect the tumor. But before we uh, go ahead and talk about uh, some of the parameters we need to look at on MRI, it's good to kind of go through the basic anatomy uh, of the rectum, which I'll present over here. And so here we have a sagittal uh, diagram at the level of the pelvis, really. This is the rectum and anus. This is going to be the uh, sacrum and the coccyx area of the bladder, the prostate, and the pubic bone. And so where do we define the rectum and where do we define the anus? And so one uh, relatively um, simple landmark that you can use to kind of get an idea where the rectum is and the anus is, is uh, the anal rectal junction, and that's marked by the uh, posterior impression of the puborectalis muscle. So let me draw that in for you. So here's the uh, puborectalis muscle coming from the pubis bone, and it goes across um, over the rectum, slings around, so that's the posterior impression of it, and on T2-weighted images that's typically dark uh, T2 signal, and it actually slings and goes behind over here and goes back to the pubis. So uh, this is the puborectalis muscle, and uh, that really forms, as I said, the anal rectal junction. It's a good landmark for it. So everything above it over here is going to be rectum, and everything below it's going to be anus. And the puborectalis muscle is an important muscle. It forms a, a portion um, of the external sphincter, which allows um, one to remain uh, appropriately continent. Now, if we were to take this sagittal diagram and cut axials through it, we would get something that looks similar to what we have over here. So this is an axial image uh, through a portion of the rectum. And there are different parts of the rectum that uh, we can see um, here. The most inner layer uh, is the mucosa, so that's marked in yellow. And kind of the black layer in between the mucosa and the green line is going to be the submucosal layer. And finally, uh, the outer green layer here is going to be the muscularis propria. So I'm just going to write MP for muscularis propria. Now the rectum, as it turns out, doesn't really have a true serosa. So for practical purposes, we'll consider the uh, muscularis propria layer as the outer layer of the rectum. And on T2-weighted images, this appears as a dark signal. So a dark signal line that envelops the rectum. That's a very important landmark uh, in order to um, evaluate rectal tumors, whether it's gone through this dark layer or not. Now surrounding that area over here is going to be a variable amount of fat. So that's the mesorectal fat. And uh, inside of there, you may see a few lymph nodes. You may see a few vessels. So that's going to be the mesorectal fat around it. And finally, surrounding that, marked in uh, purple over here, is going to be the mesorectal fascia. So the mesorectal fascia. And that's a very important landmark. When they end up taking out these tumors, so surgical resection, they cut along the plane of the mesorectal fascia. So it's important to be able to recognize it. Again, it appears as a very thin layer of hypo-intense signal on T2-weighted images. Um, and you want to make sure that there are no nodes that go very close to it, that no part of the rectal tumor goes very close to it. If it does, that will change the sort of management that they need to do before they um, go ahead and try to take out the tumor. Over here anteriorly is going to be the seminal vesicles and a portion of the prostate gland. So let's go ahead and talk about the sort of parameters that we need to look at uh, on MRI in order to appropriately locally stage rectal cancer. So the first thing to look at is really the uh, location of the tumor. And uh, when we do that, we can also measure the uh, length of the tumor. So when we talk about uh, length, it's just its uh, craniocaudate axis, so that's pretty uh, self-explanatory. But location uh, becomes particularly important in terms of uh, treatment planning. So in order to illustrate this, I'm going to draw a tumor here in this diagram. So Let's just draw this tumor here in, uh, in red. And the way we define location is really with respect to the anal verge. So this is the anal verge down over here at the uh, opening of the anal uh, canal to the, um, to the subcutaneous tissue uh, down below. And what we end up doing is measuring the distance from this location to the caudal most aspect of the tumor. So we would end up measuring uh, this distance here if we can. Now, if this distance is between 0 to 5 centimeters, we consider this a low rectal tumor. If that distance is between 5 centimeters and 10 centimeters, we consider that a mid-rectal tumor. And finally, if that distance is between 10 
and 15 centimeters, that's considered a high rectal tumor. Now, it's not necessary to uh, put in low, mid, or high in your report. You certainly can do that, but this distance should certainly uh, be mentioned in the reports. And the reason that this is important is that the lower the tumors are, the more likely they are to be uh, closer to the external sphincter. Remember, that's the posterior impression of the puborectalis that goes from the pubis and behind the rectum over here. The closer it is to be uh, to the internal sphincter, that makes surgery extremely difficult. Uh, if they do surgery, there's a risk that they'll damage those sphincters, and there's a risk, therefore, that the patient will remain um, incontinent. And so certainly, uh, mentioning the location from the anal verge uh, to the caudal aspect of the tumor is very important, and perhaps even mentioning uh, its distance from the puborectalis muscle can also be relevant. The next thing that's uh, important to mention is just the general appearance of the tumor. Is it an ulcerating tumor? You know, what's the signal uh, of the tumor itself? Um, and also the location. Is it completely um, circumferentially involving uh, the rectum? Is it uh, semi-lunar in shape? Is it involving the anterior wall? Is it involving the posterior wall? Uh, that becomes relevant as, at times, portions of the rectum anteriorly may be closer to the mesorectal fascia than posteriorly, and so if you have a tumor that's anterior, it may be more difficult to surgically correct and may require uh, preoperative therapy. So after we describe the location, length, and appearance of the tumor, perhaps one of the most important things to describe is the T stage of the tumor. Now, MRI is not particularly great at the lower stage uh, rectal tumors, and uh, it's not as relevant, uh, perhaps, because at the lower stage rectal tumors, you can successfully uh, resect them without uh, needing uh, radiation or chemotherapy. So T1 stage tumors are those that uh, start off in the mucosa layer and invade the submucosa. So I'll draw it in over here. In red, we have a tumor starting at the mucosa and invading the submucosal layer. And so MRI is not particularly great at those tumors, but again, those tumors can be resect uh, successfully resected without really requiring any radiation or chemotherapy. T2 stage tumors are also uh, somewhat difficult to detect on MRI, um, and these tumors are those that uh, certainly extend to the submucosa but do not breach the muscularis propriolaris, that green layer. So these tumors will look something like this. They start off over here and kind of invade the submucosa and are really going to be confined by that muscularis propriolaris. You'll see a nice hypo-intense T2 signal surrounding this tumor, so at no point is that breached, and that'll be a T2 tumor. So this will be really confined to the submucosal layer, while this will be confined by the muscularis propria hypo-intense uh, layer surrounding uh, the rectum. Now, MRI is very good at detecting T3 disease, and T3 disease is very important because at this stage, um, almost all the patients require some sort of chemo uh, radiation therapy prior to any attempt at resection. So a T3 stage disease, you're going to see a tumor that breaches the muscularis propria layer. So you lose that green signal, the hypo-intense T2 signal, and the green uh, uh, line that you see on these images, and it extends into the mesorectal fat over here. So over here, we'll say extends to the mesorectal fat. Now, as it turns out, not all T3 stage tumors are created equally, that there are data, there is data to suggest that the more extension that you have into the mesorectal fat, the worse prognosis you'll be. So a tumor like this has a certain prognosis. If you have a more uh, aggressive appearing T3 tumor with a lot more extension in the mesorectal fat, this tumor is not going to do as well. And so officially, we've not uh, incorporated this into the TNM staging for rectal cancer, though it is relevant for overall prognosis. So uh, in addition to seeing that there's a T3 tumor, uh, it's important to describe the extent to which it is extending to the mesorectal fat. And in general, you can say if it's less than 5 millimeters, between 5 millimeters and 10 millimeters, or is it greater than 10 millimeters? Now, you don't really need to remember these numbers, but uh, just understand that it's perhaps important to report not only if there's mesorectal fat um, extension, but how much is it extending to the mesorectal fat. Now, one thing that is quite important is to comment on the circumferential resection margin. So that's called circumferential resection margin, CRM. And that is the shortest distance from this tumor to the mesorectal fascia. So again, if you have a tumor like this, uh, they would want to know what this distance over here is. That's something that's important to report. If it's less than one millimeter, 
it becomes extremely difficult to get surgical free resection margins. And so those patients are going to acquire longer amounts of uh, chemo radiation therapy in order to kill all that tumor before they go in potentially and try to resect that out. So not only is it relevant to tell how much is extended to the mesorectal fat, but what's the shortest distance to the mesorectal fascia, which is the circumferential resection margin. Finally, we can talk about T4 disease. And this T4 disease, yeah, you can imagine, suggests that it has locally invaded structures surrounding the rectum. So whether it's the seminal vesicles, the prostate gland, bladder, the vagina, uh, portions of the uterus, um, that becomes very important uh, to mention as well. Now, after we talk about location length, the appearance, and the T stage, we also need to comment on the nodal status. And rectal cancer is a little bit different in the sense that the nodes that occur within the mesorectal fascia uh, can be very small and harbor tumors. So typically we use one centimeter short axis in most areas of the body to suggest that there's tumor, but nodes in this location can be as small as five millimeters and still contain tumor. And so it's very important to comment on the number of nodes in the mesorectal fascia, particularly ones that have a very spiculated morphology. And in a rough estimate, what I like to do is comment on if there is grossly uh, less than four nodes in, in the mesorectal fat or they're greater than four nodes as that changes the staging from N1 to N2. So you can say that, you know, there are a bunch of nodes in the mesorectal fat. Uh, the largest measure is what it does. Um, overall, there are more than four nodes, and they also want to know the shortest distance from one of the nodes to the mesorectal fascia. So that's something, for example, if you see a node right over here, they'll want to know the distance of that node to the mesorectal fat over here. Finally, if you, uh, if, if you can visualize it on the images, they want to know about metastatic disease, if there are mets. Obviously, if there are mets in the liver or lung, that, then uh, that uh, is very easy. But one thing to note is just there's adenopathy that's... Um, Really outside the mesorectal fascia and outside of the internal iliac chain. So we're talking about the external iliac nodes, um, the obturator nodes, or uh, the retroperitoneal nodes. This is also considered metastatic disease. So the nodes that we talk about locally are going to be the mesorectal fat nodes and the internal iliac nodes. Well, the nodes that suggest metastases are the ones in these three locations.